narrowing a rear end. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to narrow a rear end. So we're gonna start with getting all the brakes off this rear end. And then on the Dana 44, how they hold the axle shafts in is actually our four bolted on the back and then you can slide hammer the axle shafts out. Just like that, pulling it out with a nice slide hammer. So we got this Dana 44, mostly disassembled. We got the axle shafts out of it, which we'll have to cut down and narrow those as well, as long as we're narrowing the rear end too. Or you can set them out to get custom length axle shafts. We're gonna do it all in house, cause why not? And so we got the rear end. We don't really need to chop these brackets and stuff off because uh, we're cutting so much out of this. We're just gonna chop it off right there. And then we're gonna pull our 13 inches out of the axle shaft. And then we'll prep these and get it fully welded together. But the first thing we're gonna do is actually take our angle grinder and make a line just all the way down this axle tubing. So when we put it back together, uh, everything's back to be in a line for the brake calipers and everything just so this thing's not all cattywampy when we weld it back together. So on both sides, we'll take our angle grinder and go down the center, make a good line on there. And then we'll start marking it out, start chopping this axle housing. So instead of using an angle grinder to mark it, we ended up just spray painting it because it was easier to get it in there. And then we took our angle grinder and a four and a half inch cut off this and just started chopping it off. So now that we got our ends chopped off, we're gonna mark out 13 inches from where we cut it at the end of the axle tube. And we're gonna do that on the other side as well. So we got our 13 inches marked out and we're gonna chop the tube. So now we're gonna take some masking tape and wrap it around the tube so we have a nice straight cut. When we cut it with our angle grinder, uh, we did actually use the little bevel joint on the rear end to make sure it was straight. Uh, the other thing too is guys, uh, we're gonna have to cut those axle shafts and install them before we weld this back together due to the fact that we don't really have that much axle shaft on our nub that we cut off of the axle. Usually use a big piece of angle iron, go in here, weld it to the tubes and set this and then it makes it pretty straight. Uh, well, we don't have enough tube for that and this bevel's out. So we're gonna actually have to cut and weld our axle shafts back together and install it before we weld these axles together. But let's get this tube cut and marked out. Just look how cute it is. I don't think I've ever seen a rear end this narrow before, how narrow this guy is. So what we're gonna do next is prep these guys for welding. You can see our nice little paint line, how we can line that up again. Um, we need to actually bevel these so we get good penetration because that's probably three of an inch thick of steel. Uh, we're also gonna TIG weld this all together, but that's how literally wide this rear end is going to go, maybe axle shaft, so maybe another inch and a half out. But you can see how tiny this guy is. And it should work out great. We need to get these axles cut down for alignment purposes, because Eric kind of screwed up on that part. But we will get it nice and straight. It will be okay. So here's our stock axle shaft. And then... Here's our new stubby axle shaft. Look at that thing. This thing's tiny. This whole rear end's tiny. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, so we took 13 inches out exactly out of the axle shaft. So now we got some good round stock right there that can go anywhere we want to go. But now we need to get these axle shafts welded together. So the first thing we're gonna do is bevel these axle shafts. So we'll actually bevel them right here. So when we butt them up and weld them, we got a good place to penetrate them. Axle shafts are beveled, as you guys can see. Uh, we got one blasted together and it is extremely straight. We've checked it with our precision straight edge and it's probably within two thousandths of an inch straightness wise. So all we've been using is this piece of angle iron clamp to each side of it. And then we're gonna start blasting it together. So we're gonna show you guys exactly how we're doing it on this axle shaft right here. So we can make from this dual bees axle shaft, dual one the bees. So yeah, we uh, heated the crap out of this. We are maxing out my welder at 200 amps. We are blasting these together and making sure they're straight. So I'm gonna set you a tripod and show you guys how to weld them up. All right, she's clamped. Now we gotta use the, the magical trick of welding stuff back together at like full maxed out 220, uh, 30 amp circuit and handle of 200 amps of welding awesomeness so just clamp and we're gonna get blasting together
Decker welded. So now we're gonna unclamp this, flip it around, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll check the straightness of our, actually we're gonna let it cool for a little bit with this angle. Just kidding. That was a joke. That was all intended. Let's see how straight she is. There is a taper part right here you gotta watch out for. Eh. So we got both of our axle shafts fully welded together as you guys saw. You can see we laid in hot weld right into it. Uh, this carrier is offset too. I didn't even know this until I cut them, but you can see the axle shaft lengths. This one's shorter than this one. Well, that's because it's an offset pinion. Uh, it should be square. Hopefully it's square, knock on wood. But if you stand this guy up, you can see that right there's the middle and the pinion's not very centered. So that's why we got offset. This is longer than this side. So the short shaft goes on this side, long shaft goes on this side. You can see we beveled our weld. Uh, we are ready to weld these outer pieces on. We're gonna have to save that for the next video, guys, so make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button because you guys are not gonna wanna miss this stubby little rear end that we narrowed to go into the lawnmower chassis itself so we can go do sweet burnouts and everything else. So guys, thank you for watching. As always, keep it boosted, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.